we feel a difference then, do you think, ideally, in parish structure? Absolutely. If we don't feel a difference, then the risks will be there. If I walk into a church today and there is nothing different, there is no sign that this is a safe church, there's no indication of what the policies and procedures are, there's no indication of how a priest or the clergy are meant to act in relation to, say, altar boys and altar girls, if there's nobody that I can easily take a complaint to, if there's no literature there, if there's no communication and a conversation that naturally takes place, if the children themselves aren't provided with any education about these issues, then that will be an unsafe and unhealthy parish. It will be an unsafe and unhealthy church. But if I walk into a parish and I start to, I recognise that, yep, yeah, they actually do embrace these things. There is an open conversation. I can readily find out what the policies are. The safeguards are readily available to the church-going people. Um, then, then we'll start to say, yeah, this is a church, this is a parish that absolutely gets this. So do you mean, for instance, like just getting down to tin tax, on your bulletin, there'd be an item on your bulletin yeah. about whom you could direct a complaint to? Absolutely. In fact, one of the parishes that I was in the other day has appointed two safeguarding officers. In the diocese, Archdiocese of Perth, there are safeguarding officers attached to every parish. There's actually communication out there. And they're now, lay people, but the are most they? important, Yes, mm -hmm. but the most important thing is that there's a conversation. Child sexual abuse thrives in an environment where there is secrecy. The perpetrator requires it. The children's vulnerabilities are enhanced by the secrecy of it. How do you break that down? You have a normal conversation about sex, about sexual abuse, in the same way that we talk about workplace safety nowadays, the same way we're starting to talk about bullying, the same way society's starting to talk about domestic and family violence. It's the conversation that is necessary. So in all of these churches, we'll know that things have changed when there can be an open conversation about these issues on an ongoing basis, together with the practical measures. If that conversation doesn't take place, then in fact nothing will change.